Growing hay is a relatively easy process. You uh, seed it like you do a lawn, which takes quite a while for it to get started. And then after it gets established, then all you have to do is feed it with some uh, plant food each year to compensate for the amount that you remove. So you don't have to work the ground, you just harvest the crop and supply the plant food, which is an easy way compared to working the ground, buying seed, and uh, hauling the grain to market. That's a big process. It's just like a lawn, it grows up by itself. You put plant food on it, and then when it's a forage at its most nutritious place, why well, then you harvest it. That's why I like to get done before July, because July 4th, why things start going to seed then, and then the nutrients go into the seed of the plant and instead of into the leaf and the stem. So that's the only limitations you have. How long have you been doing this now? <laughs> <laughs> well, I got this idea about 30 years ago when the Forest Preserve decided to condemn the property on the other side of the road where we uh, had a dairy oh. and they left us with this small piece here and the fact that there was horses that needed hay that looked like a good idea because they keep a lot of equipment for corn and beans and wheat when you didn't have very many acres that wasn't a very good idea anymore i have quite a few loyal customers and uh, the characteristic of baling hay in these little bales is going out of favor and people bale the big bales and handle them with tractors on their own farm. So there's a shortage of the small bales, which are the ones that are convenient for the people that have one horse. So okay. that that's in my favor. <laughs> That's good. That's a great, great thing to have. That's in my favor. This year, I've relied on volunteers' help to do the physical work. I run the machinery. Up until this year, why, oh, for a long time, my wife and I, we used to do it alone. But then finally, the heart gives out. I mean, even, even in your 80s, you were doing this. Up until 88, then I had a triple bypass and didn't bother me much until I get the last stint. Then I had to slow down a little bit. But, uh, does this keep you young? Obviously, you look like you're 65. <laughs> well, I don't know if there's any connection there at all. A lot of hard work, though. No. No, well, it's uh, pretty pressing. At this particular time of the year, the rest of the year, why it's a somewhat leisurely pace. And what percentage of the hay goes to the Arlington Park people, would you say? Oh, whatever they want percentage, I have no idea. I mean, are they your biggest customer, folks at Arlington? They used to be. There were different ones over there that used to take a good portion of my hay and while they were racing at Arlington. There were even one or two that would haul it all the way down to Hawthorne wow. after Arlington closed. But uh, like other businesses, your customers are not guaranteed. <laughs> you don't know who's gonna be your customer. It's always someone new, I guess. Yeah. If you weren't working, what would your life be like? Can't imagine. That's why I do this. This is what I like to do. When you get up to be over 90, why 
You start taking care of yourself. What you do at farming, that's a kind of a hobby. You can't uh, talk about a typical farming day and a person that's up in their 90s, there's no typical day. Every day is a good day of your life. Yeah.